praise you, Lord, I praise you, oh, I praise you, yes, I praise you, how I praise you, my precious Lord. I love you, Lord, I love you, oh, I love you, yes, I love you, Lord, I love you, my lovely Lord. You are worthy, Lord, you're worthy, so you're worthy, so worthy, oh, you're worthy. Holy Lord. Matthew chapter 25, and I'm going to read from verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to give you just 30 seconds. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 1. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I didn't start counting from 1, by the way. Are you ready? Okay, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Point number one. How many virgins were there? Ten virgins. All, they all were virgins. All ten were virgins. No differentiation so far. Everybody looked alike. Everybody are the same category. Number one. Number two, all the ten virgins received the invitation to go to the wedding. That's the reason why they are there to begin with. They are not outside somewhere. They are not somebody who is unknown to the bridegroom. They have been received. They have received an invitation from the bridegroom. So, there were ten virgins over there, who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Point number two, what did they do? They got the invitation and they all took their lamps. They prepared themselves. All ten of them. Do you see any difference so far? Nope. All of them took their lamps. That means they all had ten lamps. Each one of them had one. And they all got ready. They all prepared for what? For the wedding, to meet the bridegroom. Do you see any difference in their desire to go to the wedding? No. They all had desire. Just like all of you who are here. You all want Jesus Christ. You all want deliverance. You all want healing. You all want, 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 want. All the, we all want, that's why we are here. We want Jesus Christ. All ten were called. All ten wanted to go and all ten prepare themselves to meet the bridegroom. Now, let's go to verse 2. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now, this looks like a topic sentence. Something is different over here. So far, there's no difference. How come all of a sudden five wise and five foolish? Among the virgins itself, among those who are prepared themselves, there's a distinction, very stark distinction God is showing over here. Five but wise, five but foolish. There's a separation now, right here. With the ten, among the ten, the eyes of the Lord is scanning. He said again, I'm separating. These are wise, these are foolish. Now we're going to look at the characteristics. Why were some wise? Why were some foolish? Now the body of Jesus Christ at large, universal body of Jesus Christ, you see a lot of believers everywhere. When you go for a mass crusade, you'll see so many hands up. It's so beautiful to see, right? So many people who really want to worship God or who are worshiping God. But when God sees, He sees five wise and five foolish. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter in to the kingdom of God. And so, we have to check ourselves and see, am I among the wise? Am I among the foolish? Where am I? What category am I in? I'm just like everybody who got the invitation, who got everything I needed. I have the desire to go, and I even have the lamp. And it's even burning. I want to go. What is actually separating the wise from the foolish, or the foolish from the wise. Let's go to verse 4. I'm going to read verse 3. Those who were foolish, what happened? They took their lambs 
men took no oil with them. They took what? They took their lambs and took no oil with them. That means they had the lamb that had sufficient oil that was burning. Whatever they needed, they had for some time. They had oil and they had the lamb. They had everything. It could have been a fancy oil. It could have been a fancy lamb. It could be glittering. Everything is there. And they wanted to go. But what happened all of a sudden? They didn't have the extra oil they needed to have. They didn't prepare themselves as they should have. Very important. We all can be together. We can all be worshippers of God. But if you and I don't take enough preparation to meet God, we will fall under the five foolish. Now, the five wise virgins looked like they were a little cookie. They looked like they're going cutting extra oil, right? They're going and doing extra preparation. The other five are thinking, this is overdoing constantly. Jesus, 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 all the time. We know Jesus too. We are praying too. This is like weird kind of person all the time. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? They're trying to make us look bad. We have enough oil. They're looking at their lambs and saying, we have enough oil. She talks to the next person, don't you think I have enough oil? Oh yeah. The next one says, don't you think I have enough oil? All five says, we all have enough oil. What are they, showing off over there? Trying to, are they going to get an oil company? What are they doing? Are they trying to prove a point? That they are doing better? Don't worry if somebody thinks that you are super spiritual. You cannot be super spiritual. Being super spiritual is normal Christianity. You need to have extra oil with you, otherwise you are doomed. Because when the king comes, that's when they frantically they go, oh, I need oil, you know why? That's when they realize that they were not that smart. Because the other ones were not actually trying to show off, they were actually preparing themselves to meet the bridegroom. You can never be too spiritual, you can never be too cautious, you can never be too holy. The Bible says, if you look at the end of Revelation, Jesus Christ says this, He who is holy, let him be holy still. That means there is room for holiness. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. That, is mean, that means there is room for progression in your righteousness. Don't be deceived saying that I'm already righteous, I'm already holy, I'm covered and I'm protected, I'm this and I'm that. Sadly, you will find on that day that you will be among the foolish and not among the wise. It takes preparation to meet the bridegroom. You have received the invitation. You are among the called and you are among the chosen. That's why you are here. And you have been given a lamp and without that we can't do anything. God has lit your lamp. That's why you have everything. Everything that we have has been given by God. By grace and grace and grace alone through faith. If I don't show my faith by my works, my lamp will have no light. I have to do what God has told me to do and that is the only thing that will show that I am actually believing in Him really. If I really believe in Him, then I am going to walk as He walks. And so, the lamp that the five foolish virgins had, had everything in there, fully there, enough oil just for them to have. But they didn't have the oil that they needed when they had to go. Now something happened. Now the wise virgins, if you read the following verse, will say that the bridegroom delayed, right? He didn't come right away. It's not that we all got dressed like the wedding now over here. Like, well, everybody gets dressed, right? We all know 6 p.m. wedding or whatever. Everybody gets dressed, they go to the beauty parlor, everything is done, the limousine comes and they sit and then they go. Everything is over. This wedding is not like that. This wedding is a surprise wedding party. It's a surprise party. And so, the bride did not know what time the bridegroom was going to come. Now, don't you think if they did not know what time the wedding is going to be or even what day that they needed to have extra oil? Common sense. They failed to because they presumed upon the grace of God. They presumed, they said, this oil is enough. You know what? The bottom line is they were not diligent. They wanted to see but they wanted to get things in an easy way. They didn't want to work hard. They didn't want to make effort. They really didn't want to 
work or do or be prepared like the wise virgins. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. How much effort, how much time are you putting in with your relationship with Jesus Christ? How important is Jesus to you? How important is he important at all? Is he? Is he worth your time? Is he worth your space? Is he worth your money? Is he worth your life? Is Jesus Christ worth everything? If he is worth everything to you, then you will be among the wise. If he is not, if he is just worth something, you will be among the foolish virgins. I'm going to close with this. Remember this. Those who are wise were not in a panic mood. They were not all the time in a panic mode saying, I'm not sleeping, I can't sleep because I'm afraid I may miss the bridegroom. I don't know what's going to happen to me. So I'm all the time keeping my lamps on. I'm all the time watching and watching and watching and losing sleep. Next day they're not able to work because they haven't slept the previous day. The following day, third, fourth day, they just faint and fall because they have not slept for days. No. When they have to sleep, they slept. They functioned as normal human beings. <coughs> but the internal clock was awake. In Song of Solomon it says, I slept, but my heart was awake. How many of you know when you're in a love relationship, you have your phone right by your bed? You're sleeping, but even the phone wouldn't have even gone. Drrr. Even when, when they just thought like that, you just get up, right? <sighs> Where's the phone? Real love will hear the whisper of your lover. Real love will know the emotions behind the words of your lover. Real love will know the heartbeat of your lover. You know he is coming. You know he is coming. You know he is coming. They all went to sleep. Five foolish virgins went to sleep. The wise ones went to sleep. So far, no difference. Absolutely no difference. But the bridegroom already saw. The Lord already saw. That's why he said even before the verse, even before explaining, he said, there were five wise and five foolish. And here it is. He broke it down. But when the bridegroom came, you can go back and read the chapter. <coughs> Only a few more verses after that. But read it. Really read it. When they came, you know what happened? All of them got up. Everything looked exactly the same from the beginning. Only one difference. One difference. One had extra oil. One had extra oil. Let me tell you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is very, 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 very important. You cannot live without it. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I tell you, go to the store and get it. Do like these five virgins, wise virgins did that. Go on your knees before the Lord. He has a big storehouse. Abundant of supply. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, unless you baptize me with the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to let you go. I need that, Lord. And the Lord says, I'm faithful to give you my Holy Spirit. He will give it to you. You need the oil for your lamp. And those who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it is not a one-time experience. Don't feel content. Don't feel superior. Don't feel that you have everything. If you don't have the extra oil every day that you need, when the bridegroom comes, you will be sorely disappointed. Now this is not only talking about the second coming. Before Jesus comes, you have to meet Jesus anyway. You and I have to either go see him or he's gonna come see us. You need to have oil in your lamp regardless of whichever happens first. So don't keep your eyes rolled so fixed on the second coming and the signs and this and that. Whatever happens will happen. If you're ready to see Jesus, you'll be ready anyway, right? You don't have to be in a panic mode, not being able to sleep. A lot of people, end time events, end time events, they're so horrified and scared, they don't even sleep. You don't have to do that. You sleep. If you have a tight relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will sleep well. But when He comes, you will get up because you have enough oil to go. You know, you have practiced every day. You turned everything on. You lit up everything. You know how your lamp functions. You know how to fill the oil. You know how to do everything. You know how to trim the wig. You know everything. Because you've been doing it every day. Those of you who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need an infilling every single day. You need a refilling every single day. You need new oil. You cannot live with yesterday's oil. It will run out. 
You cannot live with yesterday's experience. Don't say testimonies from 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago, even 2 months ago. You need to have a testimony every single day of your life. What has Jesus done for you today? What have you done for him today? I want to close with that. Shall we stand up?
you, praise you, praise you, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we surrender to your love. Hallelujah. We surrender to your power. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, Rihala Lashuba Hadrio. Thank you, Heavenly Father. There's no going backwards, hallelujah. There's no going backwards, hallelujah. There's no going backwards, hallelujah. God has done a work in you today, hallelujah. God has done a work in you today. God has done a work in you today. Work in you today. Work in you today. There's no going backwards, hallelujah. Oh, you shall not be defeated anymore, hallelujah. You shall not be defeated anymore, Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you for your work that you accomplished today. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Help each one of us to hold on to what you've given us this day, to treat it with much respect and care, to hold it close to our heart. Never let it go. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm sure and your name everywhere, for there's none like you, Almighty God. Lord, I bow my knees before you, Lord, I bow my knees before you, Lord, I bow my knees, I worship you, Lord. Lord, I bow my knees before you, Lord, I bow my knees before you, Lord, I bow my knees to worship you, Lord. Lord, I praise you, oh, I praise you, Lord, I praise you, yes, I praise you, oh, I praise you, my precious Lord. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, oh, I love you, yes, I love you, Lord, I love you.